Hey guys, I know we got a good video on this um, already, but of how to set uh, end play on Harley Davidson uh, tapered Timken wheel bearings. But what we don't have is one that's bad. So we're going to take a look here. Um, we've already got our new races in here, and we're going to uh, set this end play. So anytime you put new bearings in, what you're trying to do is you're trying to set basically the length of the spacer because when the when this is in its race in here we're adjusting how these rollers sit on the race that's down inside here so we're adjusting that play but we're going to show you here why it's so important and we're going to do kind of every mechanics video on parts inspection and this is pretty common we uh, on harley davidson's you have a steel spacer and on sport bikes it's real common that you have an aluminum one okay and if you ever go to take and change the bearings in this spacer, listen to me, this is every mechanic deal. If this spacer is flared, mushroomed, or anything else, that means it's going to be shorter, okay? Because what's happened is somebody has over-torqued a bad bearing or something, uh, usually you're just way over-torqued, and it crushes that, and now since that's a shorter distance, if you put new bearings in, th this is too small, and as soon as you tighten up the wheel, it's going to take out those brand new wheel bearings. So you always have to inspect your parts. But let's do something here. Let's switch back to Harley mode here. And can you see, we see on uh, this side how it's perfectly machined, but this side you can see the flare. It tells us it's been cut by some type of saw. Mm -hmm. yeah, not everybody has a lathe or precision uh, cutting equipment here. So you can see here that that is actually uh, sawed off, and it's also not at a good angle. So these guys... We took and did a little bit of experiment in here, and we're going to compare. This axle is straight up and down, right? Yep. I'm going to put this on the straight side here, just to prove a point. And what I'm looking at is the distance at the bottom and distance at the top. But would you say that it looks pretty even? Okay. So let's go ahead and let's put the sawed edge. And I'll try and put it in its most dramatic place. And now what would you say? Cleaning. So it's a little bit, would yeah. you agree? Yeah. So let's just settle on a little bit. So let's think about this. Since that's not straight, okay, and when you clamp this whole thing together, when I clamp this whole thing together, let's zoom in onto where in, in here. Okay. What's going to happen is instead of having a good seat, it's going to have a little gap. Would you agree? Mm -hmm. yeah, but as we tighten it down, that probably has the ability to be stronger than this thin metal cage and what's that going to do to the bearing in relationship to the race? Immediately put side uh, a side load on it. Yeah, it's going to side load that so the bearing's just not going to sit in there the way it's designed it's not going to last as long and I can't tell you how long that is but it's just not right. So we need two good machine surfaces, right? Yep. Alright, well for to move on with what we're actually trying to do here is our spacer. Watch what happens when you actually use a bad spacer that's mushroomed or too short. Would drop down inside here. You put your new bearing on. This is a big thing people overlook. So what we got here is you got our axle and the vise, and we're going to go ahead and stack up our spacers here. Just kind of making a little sandwich here. Now watch this, Alex. Here, go ahead. Uh, this is supposed to be torqued to what? Uh, Sixty-five to seventy foot pounds. Sixty-five to seventy foot-pounds is what the uh, torque of this is on the motorcycle. So watch, Alex here is just going to set his torque wrench to 10 foot-pounds, and then look at this here. Would you agree that this wheel, I just got hand pressure on here, would you agree that this rotates nice? Yeah. Will you guys go ahead and feel it for me? Go ahead, just cycle through pretty quick here. Just, yeah, just a quick little feel. Don't give it any RPM, because remember there's no grease on those bearings. Alex, I know you've done this a few times, but you just get a feel again. Okay, got it? Mm -hmm. yep. All right, watch this. 10 pounds, 10 foot pounds. Watch what happens. And here's what I recommend go ahead and spin the tire as you're tightening. Do you see what just happened? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Did you hear the wrench even click? No. No, mm -mm. no. go ahead. Okay. 10 pounds, feel it now. You can definitely feel like it's. It wants to grab it. Okay, so let's go ahead and back it off. All right. 
Now, do that again, just, just yourself, just one there. You don't need two hands, do you? No. Could you just do one finger like that? Yeah. All right, listen to me. Here's the thing. We're going to fix this, right? What I'm saying here is, is that as you install wheels, when you have the chain and brakes on here, that drag, you know, makes it hard. The thing isn't just spinning as free as can be. Are you with me on that? And I'm going to tell you, your bosses are not going to want you pulling off every uh, brake caliper and chain and trying to check all this. It has to be a point to where you get a feel of what that drag is like with the brakes and chain attached. But I'll tell you what, on this one here, if you torque this, if it's that tight now, if you torque this to 65 foot pounds, would you agree that we would, you know, be having one of these situations. Yeah. Yep. The bike weighing, you know, 700 pounds, and it would it roll down the road. No. It would, it would but it'd be but it'd be pushing those barriers. But do you realize how many people wouldn't notice? Right. Right. That's the point I'm getting at. Is that you know the bike's heavy anyway, and for you to add a little bit of muscle, oh boy, man, this bike's heavy. Is the bike heavy or the bearings crushed? Do you know what I mean? Right. So that's where we're getting at. You want to check this. Don't take for granted on any. Anything that gets clamped like that needs to rotate. In summary on that, you saw that it was a great idea to go ahead and spin this lightly as you're tightening it. When we torque this, when we do this right, and you'll see here when we're done with the second video, when we torque this correct at 65 foot-pounds, it'll do that. Make sense? If you like what you see here, would you please share it? I'd love you to keep my platform going here on uh, technical education and... Uh, um, the ways to be great in your craftsmanship. So keep on wrenching and we'll see you again in the future. Thanks for being a subscriber and follower of the channel.